This lesson looks at equilibrium. Equilibrium basically just means balance and it's balancing things out in a chemical reaction. So we want to be able to use the terms reversible reaction, equilibrium, products, closed system, constant and to be able to describe a reaction process. So the most most chemical reactions are one way reactions and they're denoted by this single arrow. Product molecules cannot change back into reactant molecules in these examples. But some reactions are two way or reversible reactions. And with these reactions, the reactants can turn into products, but the products can also turn into reactants. And for this, we use this double headed arrow. Any reversible reaction, so any reaction where the reaction can happen in both directions, can achieve a point known as equilibrium. So equilibrium is where the rates of forward and reverse reactions are equal. The concentrations of reactants and products does not change at this point. So at equilibrium, the forward reaction is happening at the same rate as the reverse reaction, which means that every time one reactant molecule is used up, a reactant molecule is formed by the reverse reaction. That means that the concentration of reactants never changes and the concentration of products never changes at the point of equilibrium. So we can show this in graphs, in graph form at the start of the reaction, so time at the um, time zero, the rate of the forward reaction is high and it slowly decreases as reactants are turned into products and the rate for the reverse reaction is zero and increasing as products turn into reactants and then at the point of equilibrium the rate of the forward and reverse reaction is equal and that stays that way. In terms of the amount of reaction the amounts of the reactants decreases the amount of the product increases and at equilibrium there's no change in amounts of reactant and product however at that point they don't have to be equal it doesn't mean that if you've got 50 grams of reactant you've got 50 grams of product it is a constant but not necessarily equal if the rate of water entering a boat is equal to the rate of water leaving the boat, then the boat will not sink. So here's an example of this in a wee picture. So you've got the water going into the boat, but the man is taking the water out of the boat with a bucket. So the volume of water inside the boat does not equal the volume of water outside of the boat. There's much more water outside of the boat because he's in the ocean. But he's at equilibrium, his boat isn't sinking because not enough water. Every time the water goes into his boat, he gets the water out of his boat. So the reaction is going to remain at equilibrium unless it's disturbed by an outside force like this big wave. We'll learn more about that later. That'll be next week's lesson. So where, where do all good parties start? In the kitchen. OK, so if we imagine that at seven o'clock, everybody's in the kitchen and then slowly people start to move through to the living room. And then by about 11 o'clock, there is 12 people in the kitchen and eight in the living room. Now, at some point, somebody might come through to the kitchen saying, oh, I need a wee drink. And somebody else might then leave the kitchen and go into the living room. This might happen various times throughout the reaction. But every time somebody goes into the kitchen, somebody will then leave the kitchen to go into the living room. And that is equilibrium. So people are still moving between rooms, but the overall number in each room stays the same. This is called dynamic equilibrium. Now, the word dynamic might confuse you because dynamic means movement. However, what it's saying here is that the movement um, is happening. The molecules are still moving from reactants to products and products to reactants, but the equilibrium position is staying the same as constant. So the direction, the equilibrium position will be the same whether we, we start with only the reactants or only the products. So here's a wee example, okay, iodine dissolves in both cyclohexane and water, potassium iodide. The 
Experiment shows one boiling tube set up with 100% iodine and iodine and cyclohexane, and one with 100% iodine in a water potassium iodide mix. So here is one boiling tube containing potassium iodide solution with iodine in it and cyclohexane in the top layer, and a second boiling tube containing potassium iodine, sol iodide solution with an iodine cyclohexane layer. So we're going to see what happens. The final equilibrium state for both of them is the same. They both end up with the pink layer on the top and the yellow layer on the bottom, regardless which way we start. Now, there is some really, really good videos um, in relation to this, and I want you to watch both of these now. I want you to pause my video and go and watch these two.